Okay, today I made some optimizations to our physics system for tile maps. Uh, previously, we were using uh, composite colliders. Let me see if I can show you this. So we were using basically this system here. You can see I have quite a big map uh, created here. Essentially, what we have been doing is we create a tile map or tile collider 2D and a composite collider 2D and we check this box to enable the composite collider and then we set it to outlines and this um, does perform better than having just a regular tile map collider but it actually is worse than just using primitive boxes so I'm going to show that today I'm going to go through each type here so this is what it looks like when you use a tile map collider by itself. And we're going to turn off this checkbox because we're not using composite. And what I've done is I set up uh, 10 different minions in the map which perform physics calculations against these colliders. Now there is also a performance hit with the AIs, but there is, but currently it's spending more time on physics than it is on AI. so. That is a contributing factor, but this you'll see will minus the AI. This tremendously increases the uh, performance. We also have a meteor storm, which is uh, raining down on this collider here. I'm going to move it over just a bit so it hits it correctly, so it's not overlapping this. And this also causes some performance hits because we're instantiating meteors, but it's not nearly as bad as the physics that it that it produces. So let's give this a run and see how well it performs. So you can see we're getting on average 13 frames per second. The uh, zero kind of looks like an eight, but that's actually that actually says zero eight. You can see the eight has a little bit of a, a curve to it. So this is running at eight FPS right now. It's claiming that the average is 13, but it seems like it's, it's around uh, eight. So this is uh, unplayable. You can't play this at all. So let's take a look at the next type of uh, tile map. So this one is what we use, which is called outlines. So it looks just like this. Essentially creates edge colliders on every surface. Let's hit play and see how well this one performs. Okay. You can see we're doing a little better. We're actually running at 18, 19 FPS. This is almost double or more than double than what we had, so that's nice. It's a little bit more playable, but it's still under 30 FPS. All right. Let's take a look at polygons. So composite colliders have another option called polygons. And essentially it does this and Depending on the complexity of your tile map, this may or may not increase your performance. Uh, for example, let me just show you real quick what happens when you paint in something intricate like this uh, column. You'll see it creates a lot of different uh, polygons. So that's not, that's not always the best. So you have to be mindful of what you're doing with polygon. So we got about 18, 19 FPS before. Let's see how much this one produces. All right, in this case, we're actually doing a little better. We're doing, we're doing 22, 24 average FPS. So we've added about uh, six FPS on average. We're getting closer to the 30 FPS mark. All right. Now this last one, doesn't actually show collision in the scene because it doesn't generate them until runtime. I'm gonna improve that so we can make an editor script that will generate these so we can save them to the scene. Uh, but essentially what this does is it has a generate box collider script that will run through every single tile and create a collision box. But not only does it create a collision box for each tile, it will actually try to group tiles together so that there's the so that it calculates the minimum amount of box colliders you need to cover all tiles. So it's an algorithm that I built that will go through and figure out the minimum amount of rectangles. It's not perfect, but it does a really good job. 
So let's hit play and see how well this performs. And then we'll take a look at the boxes that it created. And you'll see we're running at an average of, looks like we're gonna go over 100. So 106 FPS on average, we're running at 130. And you can see it's buttery smooth. So this is a an extreme improvement versus the other options. And let me just show you what we're doing. It's actually kind of insane how many boxes we have in the scene. And you can see it does a pretty good job of estimating where boxes are placed. We probably could do a better job of just covering exposed tiles, but this, this is already pretty performant compared to what we were experiencing. You can see we're benefiting greatly from it. So 106 FPS on average. So we went from we went from like 9 FPS to 100 FPS. This is a times 10 improvement. And each one of those were game objects. So it didn't seem to affect it. And just to show how well this is working, we are going to make a build. And we're going to see how fast it runs in play mode. So I noticed there's like 30 to 40% overhead with the editor. So you get like an extreme like improvement when you make a build. All right, let's check it out. I had to turn off VSync just to show this. So you can see we're running on average 298 frames per second. The FPS right now is locked to 300. So the display actually doesn't go above that. So right now we're running at 300 FPS and it may be higher. We just can't see it because it's capped at 300. So yeah, that was my little demo today showing you uh, my new system for colliders when you're using tile maps and the performance increases you can get uh, with it. Thank you for watching.